We're loaded up. We picked up the aircraft from Doug and we're fueling up here at Sheets in North Carolina and we are ready to make the 30 hour trek back to Mesa, Arizona. But first we're gonna stop and get a little caffeine and it's about 12 o'clock at night right now, about midnight. So we're gonna start driving through the night. All right, we got the bacon secure in the back. Switched drivers a few hours ago, passing through West Memphis. Heading through uh, Little Rock? Yeah. Got Jake, captain, captain of the, the old beast here, making our way through. All right, it is four in the morning. Jake and I got the bird back. She's here at the shop for now. Just unloaded a pile of parts out of the old budget truck. 30 hour drive, over 2000 miles. The old project's back, safe and sound in Arizona. All right guys, finally had a minute to get some sleep. Um, shout out to Jake for coming along with me on this long haul. But as you can see, we've got the Avid Plus kit here at the shop for now in Mesa, Arizona, all the way from Clemens, North Carolina. So I'm here tonight just doing a little inventory on the kit, kind of going through everything, planning all the parts that we've got and what we're gonna do going forward. But I thought now would be a good time to kind of give you guys just a kind of a brief overview of the project, the history behind it and how I came to acquire it. So for the last, I don't know, long, long while, I've been researching and planning out what airplane I'm going to purchase. But what I came to find out, and like a lot of you know, Airplanes are not the cheapest thing on the planet to purchase, um, especially with certified aircraft. And I always loved watching videos of bush plane pilots. Like uh, one of them is a really famous pilot that we all know and love, Trent Palmer, um, in his Kit Fox, always buzzing around river bottoms and sandbars. And I just love that with my background and off-road. As you can see, here's my, my Jeep that I built, LJ. Um, LS swap, coilovers, all that fun stuff. I love being off-road. I love getting to destinations that you normally couldn't with the standard vehicle or just on, on foot, right? And so um, I loved the bush plane aspect because you could kind of take the two together, aviation and off-roading, and combine them in the two and you've got kind of a, an off-road land and air monster. So then I started my search for bush planes. I looked at some malls, some different uh, trail, tail dragger bush planes, and and everything that was certified was 60, 70 years old. It either needed, it was timed out or, or the ones that weren't timed out were hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so I started to go down the path of the uh, the more experimental route aircraft uh, kit planes. And it kind of just hit home with me. Being in fabrication, you know, building Jeeps and vehicles for a living, I thought, hey, you know, let's see how hard it is to build an, an aircraft. And so I started watching tons and tons and uh, build videos of of people building kit planes, um, you know, Bearhawk, Kit Fox, Avid, Rands, all of them. And it was one of those things where I thought, you know what, I can follow some instructions and I feel like I have, you know, more fabrication skills than the average Joe. Um, yeah, let's see if we can tackle a project. So I um, started looking at the Kit Fox and, you know, the two, three year wait just wasn't really what I was looking for at the time. But I thought, you know what, I'll wait for the right one. Looked at Bearhawk, uh, four place would have been a nice aircraft, but realistically time and, and the mission didn't quite fit. And so I just started looking on Barnstormers and just different secondhand classified papers Ages, um, looking for a used kit fox, realistically. But being 6162, the more affordable kit foxes, the one through threes and kind of into the fours, they didn't really suit a taller, you know, guy like myself in the cockpit. So I started looking at the five, six, sevens, you know, even though Trent Palmer flies the five, some of the other guys out there fly the, the sevens and the sixes. Six is a little more rare to see out there. But anyway, I thought, you know what, that's what I need to do. If I'm gonna fit into one of these uh, kit planes, it's gonna have to be a five, six, or a seven, but they don't really come up under a hundred grand a whole lot on marketplace. And so I thought, well, darn, I guess I'm just gonna have to hold out and put my name on the list and build a kit. I also have known about the Avid Flyers and they're kind of the, the, the before kit foxes, right? Before they went out of business. And uh, I've always known about them, but I knew they were, you know, kind of smaller. They compared to the four in, in terms of the, the Mark V heavy hauler. And I thought, you know, that's a good idea, but I still want something a little bit bigger. And then one day this sucker popped 
popped up. It's an Avid Plus. And if you're like me, I thought, what is an Avid Plus, right? I've heard about the Magnum. I've heard about the, you know, the Five, the Heavy Hauler. I've heard about all those, right? Well, I started doing some digging and this sucker, to my understanding and all the research on the forums and what's out there, there was only seven full Avid Plus kits made. Now you've probably heard of a Fat Avid and uh, I think there's a lot of confusion behind the two. The Fat Avid is basically a, 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 a Mark IV from what I, I believe and what I understand is a Mark IV that's been, uh, they've cut the fuselage, lengthened it and stretched it to give you just the more room and, and capability that you would with a, a bigger, a little bigger and, and wider airframe. But the Avid Plus is actually, it came as an actual kit. It was built from the factory as a plus model. So all the measurements are pretty much similar to the Kit Fox 7 in terms of, in terms of space in the cockpit, width, height, length, it's got a balanced rudder, all that good stuff that I was looking for in the Kit Fox 7 could in some way be found in this Avid Plus model. And I like the fact that it was unique, right? Only seven of them, seven of them, seven kits produced. I think there's four or five of them that are actually tracked down out there flying. So I like that idea. So after some time uh, speaking with Doug Hawley, who is the former owner of this um, this project, um, who he, he'd done quite a few things on it and he is a, a a, a book of knowledge. He's an encyclopedia when it comes to Avid um, and Avid Plus. And so looking back, I was able to go through all his build logs and uh, and pages that he had posted on the Avid Flyer internet uh, forum group. And so um, I knew, you know, it was quality built in terms of what he had done. And I'll show you a little bit about kind of what, what's been done and, and what's left. There's a lot left. And so I felt really confident that the price was right, but the only thing was it was in North Carolina. I'm in Mesa, Arizona. A little bit of a flight or a drive and I wasn't really wanting to pay shipping on a sight unseen kit. So took a little gamble, put a deposit down on the kit. Doug and I coordinated. My wife went out of town for a, a wedding, took the kids. It worked out where I took one of my coworkers, Jake, who you guys all saw. He was kind enough to, to, to make the drive and the flight with me. So we bought some one-way plane tickets, rented a budget truck, and uh, we got to North Carolina uh, a little later in the evening, had some dinner with Doug and his wife, loaded this guy up in the budget truck, and <laughs> booked it home. So just a little bit more of a backstory on why I decided to go this route versus going more certified. Like I said, I love to fabricate, so I like to kind of go outside of the box with, with whatever I can. and and improve things and so like really i want to i want to have freedom to do what it is that i want to do um and uh be safe at the same time and so i started looking at the kit planes well the first thought with the kit plane is oh it's it's a garage built kit plane that, that can't be safe you're flying through the air well and doing a lot of research there is there are thousands and thousands of these kit planes out there that are flying and and are flying safely and i feel like they keep improving over time in terms of safety and and proving themselves over time and a lot of my friends that are pilots have said you know what if i'm if i would own another airplane i wouldn't own another certified aircraft just because of the expenses and, and all that's entailed with doing the stcs for the bigger the bigger uh you know landing gear and and the engines and all that stuff and so I started looking more and considering the kit plane route. These two seater airplanes are pretty, pretty dang basic. Realistically, from firewall back, you're looking at chromoly tube, which that's welded from the factory. Uh, and you know, I don't know of many airframe failures um, that have been welding from the factory. So that was great. And realistically, it's it's all mechanical from firewall back minus your your panel, right? Which is all, you can make that as like, simple or or you can go to glass as you want and uh, and, and kind of go that route. And then firewall forward, I mean, that's that's all, that's all Rotax stuff, right? It's been around for a long time. It's it's proven. You know, there's guys going the, the Yamaha Apex route, which is kind of intriguing, but realistically, it's kind of a no-brainer for me to be able to build it and do it all myself and save myself money and, and actually get into an airplane a lot sooner than I would have going the certified route and looking at like a Cessna 180 or, you know, uh, any of the Sky Wagons or anything like that. So this seemed to fit my mission, what I was looking to do. And the cool thing about this aircraft is being a plus model, a lot of the measurements end up being similar to the 
Kit Fox 7 in terms of like firewall mounting points, widths and stuff like that. So I'm actually gonna be running a Kit Fox 5 sm smooth cowl for Rotax uh, firewall for the cowl will match. So it'll look pretty similar to Kit Fox in some fashion and kind of have its own little little avid flair um, as we build this thing. A lot of things like we're, we're gonna go bigger, we're going bigger gear, we're going uh, being in the off-road world with the off-road shocks and, and coilovers. I can't help myself. We're gonna we're gonna have some fun with the, the landing gear and the tailwheel and in terms of all the, the engine and, 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 and all the instrument panel. We're gonna have some fun with that, being able to build this out how, how we want it to be. So kind of giving you guys a closer look at this thing. I mean, what's funny about these kits is you look at them and you're like, there's no way that thing's gonna fly. <laughs> it's a bunch of tubes. And realistically, without the coverings and the fabric on these, these aircraft, they're, they're pretty dang simple. Um, but what I love about the Plus model is it's got a pretty roomy 43 inch wide cockpit. That's the same as a Kit Fox 7. Um, you know, capabilities for a 42 inch, uh, inch uh, instrument panel there, a flat firewall and uh, 26 inches firewall to seat truss um, with some adjustable uh, seat backs for, for those longer legs. The other thing that I liked about the, uh, the Plus, um, it's, you can see there, um, I don't know if you really can see with the seats, but they have under seat control mixer system um, and there's Teleflex flapper on push pull cables and um, quick disconnect flapper on flapper ons for for being able to fold the wing. So I really like that this this aircraft, just like the Kit Fox, um, you can fold them up just, you know, good old uh, good old Dean Wilson, you know, foldable high wing design. You can store it at home or store it in a in a hangar and save on hangar space if you want to. And so I, I like that ability to be able to throw it on a trailer and if you wanted to, or fold up the wings and, and put it in your garage. You can see the wings are still uh, wrapped up from the trip. I like the idea behind these wings. Uh, Doug, Doug did something pretty cool with them. He kind of built a, a hybrid long hauler speed wing, I guess you can call it. And basically it's avid heavy hauler specs, you know, with all the seven, eight lift struts and all, all that good stuff. All the, the two and a half inch spars. Um, but he used the, the, the flat bottom speed wing um, instead of the under cambered um, heavy hauler wing. Um, and, and I kind of thought it was the best of both worlds in terms of strength and, and also speed. So looking forward to seeing how these work out. Another thing Doug was planning to do with this, and I, I'm, I, I think we'll, we'll continue to use them, is he's using the, the Horner style Kit Fox uh, wing tips. Those will add a little bit of width as well as give it kind of a unique flair and, and, and style. And we've just got a ton of parts that I need to unpack and go through an inventory, but everything in terms of the kit is here, which I love. Doug did a great job at keeping everything together, keeping it really, really nice. And so I'm looking forward to organizing everything and going through it and, and marking everything so we can we can get this build started and on the road. Looks like a pile of parts right now, which it is. But one day, the last of the Avid Plus, Airedale Avid Plus is, is gonna be built and up in the air. So once again, guys, thanks for joining me on another adventure. This one's a little different than the Jeep builds we've been doing, but nonetheless, we've got big tires. We've got an engine in it, so it fits what we do. We like adventure, we like excitement, energy, um, all that fun stuff, and this fits the mold. So I'm looking forward to you know taking my my son camping and fishing and some remote airstrips one day and taking friends out and doing some fun things with this and just enjoying the backcountry in this aircraft. So looking forward to it. Stick around. There's a we've got a long road to go building this thing, getting it to the point where it's airworthy. So stick around for some videos and we'll have a lot of fun.